Hi, I'm Mike Fraser, one of New Zealand's five professional referees. I started refereeing in 2001, went professional in 2013. From that, I've been fortunate enough to referee over 200 first class games, including over 50 Super Rugby games and seven test matches. But, just as importantly, I'm also a dad and a coach of the under nine Johnsonville Eagles. So that means, as we all know, we sometimes have to referee on those Saturday mornings. Would I be dressed like this? No. It's important we're dressed appropriately. We need to look the part for both players and spectators alike. We need to be able to move around the field, make good decisions, and more importantly, award those tries. There are many signals in refereeing, but let's focus on the four primary signals. Start the game in awarding tries. Arms straight above the head, with whistle long and loud. Penalty, straight arm at 45 degrees to the body, whistle loud and moderate length. Free kick, bent arm, 90 degrees at the shoulder and elbow, whistle length and volume is moderate. Scrum and signalling advantage, arm straight out at 90 degrees to the body, whistle length, short and moderate. Remember, if we're signalling advantage, we don't need to blow our whistle. As we've said, there are many secondary signals that we can use, but what I find works well for me is to use my voice rather than worrying too much about those secondary signals so both players and spectators know what's going on. As we've said, it's important to look the part. Wear a kit that allows you to get around the field. Be honest, be fair to both teams, which I know isn't always easy when you're a coach or a parent of one of the teams. Have good communication, use signals, whistle and your voice. Have good control, that means keep the game moving. Have empathy, in other words, understand what the players are trying to achieve. Be consistent so the decisions are the same for both teams. You need law knowledge, especially around the age group you're dealing with. Have some base to your fitness, at least keep up as best you can and award tries close to where they're scored. And most importantly, enjoy yourself. Safety is paramount for you and the players. So what does that mean? Well for me as a parent, that's about ensuring my children and my team are safe. Making sure we've got that environment that's safe, mouth guards are in and boots are safe and ready to play. Part of maintaining that safe environment is on the rare occurrence you may have to deal with foul play. What I like to do with my team is to remind them before the game, aim for the tummy when tackling but no higher than that sternum. When dealing with foul play, it's important you recognise the age of the children you're dealing with. For the younger children, it may just be a simple case of penalty or sending them to the sideline for a moment to cool down. However, for the older children, we've got three levels of sanction available to us. Firstly, just the penalty. Penalty and sin bin, where that player is removed from the field for a period of 10 minutes. Or, if it's more extreme, then that player is sent from the field of play and can't return. As we know, from time to time, we will have to deal with bad behaviour on the sidelines. What I personally like to do is set up pre-game with the opposition coach that should we have an issue during the game, that they will help me manage that situation. I need to stay safe as a referee, and they can help me do that. The tackle is an area of the game where a lot of our injuries occur. However, with good coaching, these can be avoided. When refereeing tackle, in terms of safety, there are three key pitches I look for. Contact below that sternum or tummy tackles. The use of arms wrapped around the ball carrier. And the tackler making a good attempt to get out of the tackle zone by rolling clear. Because we're now refereeing contested scrums, we must have a pre-match safety briefing. That's a chance to talk to both front rows, get to know them, but also share some safety messages. Every scrum we must use the three-step process. Crouch, bind, set. And making sure they understand that is important. Even with the grades that don't have that pushing, it's still a good habit to get into. Because players at this level have only just started moving into contested scrums, there's a few more things we need to be aware of. Poor technique and body position. Poor head position. No bind or dropped bind. Wheeling, driving up, or down, mismatches, 
pushing beyond half a metre. Try and get your back to the goal line, a tackle, ruck and more. Try stay ball in line with your positioning, which allows you to referee tackles, rucks and mauls from the best position. Always maintain a view of the ball. As the ball emerges from scrums, rucks and mauls, drop back and wider to create space for the players. Around the goal line, be alert and get into in-goal position to look for play coming towards you. This is the area of the game that's a busy one for us as referees. The key pitches I'm looking at from a safety perspective are arriving players binding onto the body of another player, arriving players coming directly from behind and not on the side, and arriving players looking to stay on their feet rather than diving in. Ripper should be a fast and fun game. Too much officiating can be bad for players under seven. Before the game gets underway, check that all players have the belt and the two flags hang from both sides, one on each hip. The belt must be worn outside the clothing. We want shirts tucked in and flags free so they can be ripped off. Make sure you have a whistle, know the laws and try to play advantage wherever possible. Shout pass when a rip has been made or maybe call out one, two, three so the players know how many rips have been made. Blow the whistle when, and only when, play has to stop. To signal to the team who is starting with a free pass, point with an outstretched arm towards that team. When someone is ripped, the ripper stops, holds the flag above their head and shouts rip. The ball carrier must then pass the ball immediately. Within three strides is a good guideline. They do not stop, they do not return to the mark, and they do not roll the ball between their legs. After the ball carrier has passed the ball, the ripper must hand the flag back to that player. Use your judgment around offsides at this age and stage. It's about fun. Offsides only occur at the rip. When a rip is made, all players from the ripper's team must get back until they're behind where that rip was made. A try is awarded when the attacker presses the ball over the goal line. A try can also be awarded if the ball carrier is in the motion of scoring a try, even if they were ripped. Blow your whistle and celebrate the try. Running down the middle of the field is a good option for Ripper. You'll always be close to the action, but don't get too close so you're in the way. Use the on-field coaches to support your referee. Work as a team. Look, this is under seven Ripper rugby, not super rugby. Use your judgment to make sure the players on the field have the best day they can. We want to make sure they're having a fab's time. That means having fun, they're achieving, sense of belonging, and they're safe. Be confident. Strong signals, strong whistle, strong body language. Safety, a key priority for not only ourselves, but also the players. The best law for us is advantage. Use it the best you can to allow the game to flow and the players to have fun. Call what you see. If there may have been a potential knock on or forward pass, but you didn't see it, play on. Get there. For the credibility of your decisions for players and spectators, make sure you're in the best position. My number one tip, enjoy your work. If you're enjoying it, players and spectators will enjoy it too. Have fun out there.